Hey guys, it's Bub here, and in this video, we're going to be trying to install Windows 11, yes, the Windows 11 that has absurd minimum requirements, to an older computer. I believe this is from 2010-2011. It has 2 gigabytes of RAM, a standard hard drive, and I believe some kind of Intel Pentium, not a 4, some kind of newer, cheap Pentium inside of it. Because Windows has these absurd hardware requirements like TPM and Secure Boot, I would really like to see, A, can we even get Windows 11 on this older machine? And more importantly, how does it run? Because if Windows 11 runs at least somewhat well on this older machine, there is no reason why it shouldn't be supported by Microsoft. So let's go ahead and take a look at it and see what we can do. Now my original thought was to go ahead and use Rufus to create a USB, but then I thought about it. I don't know if this ISO supports legacy, and I don't know if it has the TPM requirement. Before Microsoft had an official ISO when we used that UUP dump, we had to make a custom ISO with the Windows 11 install.esd file on a Windows 10 ISO, and that is how we were able to bypass those requirements. However, the only problem with that now is I have no clue if this has those requirements or not. So just to go ahead and kind of, I guess, save time. So here I have my Windows 10 install USB that we'll be using to install Windows 11. Now, what we want to do is we're going to go ahead into sources, scroll down, and then find the install.esd. Since this is a USB, I can go ahead and delete it. But before we do that, I'm going to mount the Windows 11 installer and go ahead and go find that same file. Okay, so the only difference is install esd, install wim, they're kind of the same thing. So on the USB, we're going to delete install.esd, which may take a while because it is a USB 2.0 USB. And now we're going to go ahead and take the install.wim and copy it over to this. And the only problem is install.wim is too large for the destination file system. So again, this is going to be a standard Windows installation. We're going to switch it from GPT to MBR, so it works on both legacy and UEFI systems. So we're just going to go ahead and name this Windows 11 Vanilla, just to show that this is not a modified ISO. And we're just going to go ahead and start. So hopefully this will work, and I'll see you on the computer. Alright, so here we are on the actual computer that we're going to be installing Windows 11 to. I'm just going to go ahead and turn it on, and hopefully we can get into the BIOS to see the specifications. I think the BIOS key is Enter. Yeah, it is. All right, so here are the actual specs. We have an Intel Pentium G620 at 2.6 gigahertz with two cores, um, two gigabytes of RAM that's not very fast, and your standard hard disk. So nothing really special here. I would be recording this through um, a capture card. However, this only has VGA, and I don't have the right adapter. So I do have to use my camera, unfortunately. So let's go to our primary boot sequence and already USB key is at the top. So we should just be able to save and exit and boot straight into Windows. All right, so here we are. This is the vanilla ISO that I did download. So hopefully it means something. There are two partitions on this hard disk. So I'm gonna try to install it just to one because I don't wanna mess up the other partition. Um, so far we don't have any errors and yeah, we, there's no errors. It hasn't told us that we need TPM. Oh, there it is. This PC can't run Windows 11. So we're going to have to go back to the drawing board and make a modified ISO, which I really didn't want to do, but we're going to have to. All right, so now I do actually have a plan. Since, you know, it didn't work just with a vanilla 11 ISO, I don't want to download Power ISO and go through that whole thing again to make a custom ISO. So what we're gonna do is, if we remember, we tried to copy that install.wim file and it didn't work because the file system was FAT32. Well, with Rufus, the file system is NTFS and that can handle four gigabyte files. So we're actually gonna go ahead and we're gonna make a Windows 21H1 ISO on this. So it's just gonna be 21H1-11. And we're of course gonna go MBR with BIOS and it's going to automatically default to the NTFS file system. And we're going to just make a regular Windows 10 version 21 H1 ISO. Then we're going to copy that Windows 11 file. So in here, that install dot, I believe it's WIM. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to boot it up and it should let us install Windows 11. 
Alright, so now that we have the modified ISO, or the modified USB rather, already made, it's got the Windows 10 installer with the Windows 11 files on it, we can go ahead and simply turn on the machine, and then let's go ahead and press enter to interrupt the startup, and then we want to go into our temporary startup device. From there, we can go ahead and of course pick that USB just by, just by clicking USB key 1, and we will see the Windows 10 logo, not the Windows 11 logo. This is because for the actual installer, we're using the Windows 10 ISO. So yeah, like I was saying, we will see that Windows 10 logo, not the 11, for the simple fact that this is the Windows 10 installer, not the 11. It's going to install Windows 11, but it's not the 11 installer. So of course we can go ahead and click next and install now and here is all of our available editions so let's go ahead and click on windows 11 pro and go through accept the license terms continue custom we're going to go ahead and go with this windows 10 uh, this is what i want to overwrite hopefully there's enough storage if it's not i can just go ahead and rewrite all right so now we're actually inside of the windows 11 and not the installer the setup on this older machine and I can tell you it took over an hour to install I don't know if it's because of the RAM or if it's because of the hard drive I'm gonna put my bets on both but more the hard drive because this is just being so ridiculously slow um, I just want to see if this has been updated no it still has the regular old Windows uh, the regular old Windows 10 slider for the volume so yeah, this is that screen where we got stuck on for quite a while, and I have a feeling that we're going to be stuck on getting ready for quite a while, or whatever this high getting ready thing is. We're going to be stuck here for quite a while, especially with that hard drive. It's going to be ridiculously slow. Alright, so we're finally in the desktop of Windows 11, however, there are some noticeable problems. Number one, our drivers for the display are not installed, so I'm going to go ahead and I actually put the drivers on a USB not only for the display but also for the USB Wi-Fi adapter so hopefully we'll get some Wi-Fi running here very shortly um, I would open task manager through the taskbar but you know that got that got removed so let's go ahead and just open it through the start menu context menu I just want to see what kind of stuff we're using here because Windows 11 is very RAM heavy in many ways so I hope that was just for drivers not for anything else like we didn't just crash the entire system or something alright yeah that was for drivers because we now have the full control there we go that's what I was looking for so we are actually using about uh, what is this 60 percent of the CPU and we'll restart later 60% of the CPU, 40, 50, blah, blah, blah. And we are using about a gig and a half of memory out of two. So our biggest constraint right now is definitely memory. Besides the little stutters here and there, which could just be because of driver problems, it really is, it's like running Windows 10 on this machine. Because I did have Windows 10 on this machine before, and it, it, it runs exactly like Windows 11 is running right now. I'm really noticing no difference whatsoever between 10 and 11. I mean, obviously Windows 7 did run significantly better than both of those operating systems, but it's it's running very well for what it's worth. I mean, I just clicked on this taskbar corner, whatever it's called now, and like I said, it is taking a little bit longer because it can't cache this stuff because there's only two gigabytes of RAM. If it had more, maybe four or even eight, it would be able to cache things like this little taskbar corner so it wouldn't have to load every single time but we are very limited on RAM we are half of the recommended RAM requirement for Windows 11 but honestly as of right now even though I'm not really connected to the internet just running based off of how we are right now I'm really impressed at how Windows 11 is actually handling on this machine I'm not really sure what else you could expect out of this machine it's it's gonna be slow that's what it is it's a slow machine but it's handling very well and it really kinda makes me question why is Microsoft killing support for these machines 
All right, so now that we are actually connected to the internet, let's browse the internet. Um, obviously, like I said, this machine I wouldn't use for anything more than internet browsing. I don't think you'd be able to play games on this. I don't know if you'd be able to even run Minecraft. I mean, maybe. So we actually opened File Explorer before we opened Edge. I think that says a lot about the experience here. So, yeah, this is this is interesting. It would be painful to use, but it's usable. If you didn't have anything else, I mean, this is extremely usable. Even if you threw an SSD in, I feel like it would be way better. So, Microsoft, I really don't think we should kill off these machines. And even if you can install it on an unsupported machine like we did here, you're not going to get security updates. I don't know if you saw, but when we were in Winver, this is version 22,000.132. The latest version, I think, is in the 190s. So we are way out of date. But when we were in Windows Update, it said your software is up to date. No security updates, no cumulative updates, none of that. You get zero updates from Microsoft on unsupported hardware. Which is basically saying, hey, figure out a way to update yourself, or just roll back to Windows 10 for the next five years, and then buy a brand new machine. I really don't think that we should be encouraging that, because these old machines that worked perfectly fine should just be able to work until they don't. You know, we could run XP era machines on Windows 11 probably with no problems if they were upgraded with more RAM and an SSD. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe if you're new around here as I do all kinds of technology videos including device restorations. And with that being said, I'll see you all in the next one.